Hello, and thank you for joining. In this session, we're going to be exploring some common types of collaboration apps that developers are creating. My name is Phil Vellante. I'm a developer evangelist for Cisco WebEx. Since this is going to be a rapid fire Latin, lightning talk, I'm going to jump right into it. In this presentation, I'm going to highlight four common types of apps that we see from developers to power collaboration solutions. These are bots, integrations, embedding, and on-device apps. While these four application types can all work towards common goals, like optimizing workflows and connecting users with external services, they all do it in their own unique way. Let's briefly go through each of them to see what they are and show you how you can find out more. Let's start with one of the more common types of collaboration apps, and that is a bot. Bots are essentially automated agents powered by an app that try to communicate like a human to help you. Bots in messaging and chat are very big business, both in enterprise and for consumers. People have become comfortable interacting with bots, and one of the reasons for that is because how easily they can bring in content in and out of services that we already use. In recent times, we've seen an explosion in APIs from all kinds of services, which gives bots more functionality and also makes them easier to build. The example on this slide shows a chatbot for Twitter that sends real-time tweets from followed accounts inside a messaging client, and then also deliver user replies back to Twitter. So this bi-directional bot solves the problem of context switching, where you have to jump back and forth between two apps to get the information you need and get a task done. Integrations are also a very common type of application that we see from developers. Integrations are applications that connect external services together to enhance a user experience. You may have used an integration if you've ever linked your Google account to register with a third-party application, for example. But more powerful integrations can do many other things, such as manage your meetings calendar, perform bulk administrative tasks, and access privileged information from services you use. The level of account access an integration needs is usually pre-configured by the developer and then presented to the end user of the integration, asking for permission to their account, you know, as shown in the example illustration here. And this is usually done through an OAuth grant flow. Because integrations need permission from the user to access their account and perform actions on their behalf, integrations can be more powerful than a bot by itself. However, a bot used in conjunction with an integration can be a useful way to give it special powers. Now let's talk about applications for embedding. Embeddable applications are quite a bit different concept where developers can leverage SDKs or other components to insert features of enterprise collaboration software into their web or mobile apps. So for example, envision a lawyer that logs into a municipality circuit court website that tracks and manages their scheduled remote court proceedings. When it's time to have a virtual hearing with the judge and other parties, instead of having the lawyer install and launch a separate meetings app just to do the hearing, it can be done right inside an embedded window in the circuit court's web app. The developer doesn't have to reinvent the wheel to build a native meeting tool. They can leverage a high quality solution and embed it quickly into their own UI and UX design. For users that do most of their communication inside collaboration apps like WebEx, we also see developers going in the other direction where they embed apps inside collaboration spaces for quick and contextual access. So those users can stay inside the tool that they use most to communicate with their work contacts and still utilize third-party pro productivity apps in that location. So embedding really goes both ways. The last type of application that I'll highlight gets deployed right on a collaboration device, like a video conferencing unit. And these kinds of apps may not even need to be hosted anywhere else because they're installed on the device itself and leverage their onboard APIs. We've seen a lot of apps on devices that customize meeting experiences. So for example, an app on a meeting device that uses face detection to count how many participants join from the same conference room the app then configures the appropriate camera and mic settings based on the number of people detected. There are, there's also on-device apps that control your office peripherals, like room lighting and automatic window blinds. So now custom room ambience settings can be changed automatically, such as when a meeting starts or when a meeting ends. 
So in the end, all of these apps aim to make work easier and more productive. So a great place to explore a variety of collaboration apps is the WebEx App Hub, which is a site that enables anyone to share their bots and integrations with the rest of the WebEx community. The WebEx App Hub is located at apphub.webex.com. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go check it out and try out some of the neat integrations there. You know, chances are you're gonna find a WebEx app for services you already use. And if you wanna start looking into building these kind of apps for a future project, head on over to the WebEx for Developers portal, portal located at developer.webex.com. You can even use the QR code on the slide to quickly navigate over to that site. So there you're gonna find a lot of the great documentation, tutorials, code samples, and demos that span across all the WebEx APIs and SDKs. Um, the API documentation there has a built-in REST client, so developers can try things out right from the docs. Uh, you can also uh, obtain a bot accounts there, configure integrations, manage your deployments, and you can also link up with our awesome developer support team. So thank you for taking the time to watch this session. I also encourage everyone to check out the WebEx virtual event, uh, the WebEx One virtual event, and that starts October 26th, where you can hear some announcements about some new developer offerings coming down the pipe. Uh, you can also find uh, more info on WebEx One at webex.com. Until then, enjoy the rest of DevNet Create. Thank you.